Hey, welcome back. We are in the book of Exodus, uh, Shemot, actually, the names. And we're at chapter 23, and we're going to read verses 24 to 28 today and comment on those. Let's go straight to it. You shall not worship their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their deeds, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break their sacred pillars in pieces. But you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will remove sickness from your midst. There shall be no one miscarrying or barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion all the people among whom you come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I will send hornets ahead of you so that they will drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites before you. Okay, so the God's people have uh, been delivered from Egypt. They come to the foot of Mount Sinai, God gives them the law, and here we have some more laws and uh, some stuff coming right up here at Mount Sinai, but then they're going to continue their journey along the way, and they're supposed to go into the promised land. They're gonna wind up in kind of a 40-year spin cycle because of their own rebellion and disobedience, but here we still see sort of uh, what God's plan is. The first thing we want to make notice of here is you, God commands his people very plainly, you will not, you will not worship their gods. It's a very definite thing with God. You shall not worship their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their deeds. You will utterly overthrow them and break the sacred pill their sacred pillars in pieces. So here's God telling them, uh, you will not in any way, shape, or form incorporate the different pagan uh, nonsense and ideas out there, all of which has, of course, you know, been influenced by Satan and is bent and twisted from the facts to do something that misrepresents God and God's ways. God says, you're not going to incorporate that into your belief system. It's not going to happen. Do not do it. <laughs> I'm against that. Okay, so that's a key issue going on here. When you get into this land, because now they're talking about, you know, finishing the journey and getting into the land, you're not going, this is not what you're supposed to do. Now, it turns out historically, guess what? That's more or less what they do. But God is warning them here and now, don't do that. I don't, that's not the plan. Instead, they are to utterly overthrow, utterly break down all their things and not be influenced by them in the slightest, in the least. Of course, today you and I live in a very uh, a time where there is great syncretism, where every kind of idea is being, it's just being blended into the church. It's, the church is kind of like a guy who's catching balls, you know, and, and it's like you're in a gymnasium and everybody's throwing the ball and you got one guy and they're throwing all the balls to him and he's catching each one. Oh, here comes one. And this is the way God's people so often do. It's like, here comes some nonsense that's being thrown over here. Oh, here, got it, nailed it. And, and you're catching them all and keeping them. And, and that's not the way it is. You start with what God gives you and you finish with what God gives you. But if you put in all this other nonsense along the way, guess what you're gonna get? You're gonna get a very messed up faith. Notice the different blessings that God promises. You won't have any miscarriages. You will be fruitful. You know, you're going to have lots of babies. You're going to have beautiful big families. You're going to have all the food you need. You won't be sick. I mean, this is this is a really special promises. So lastly, let's think about this. I'm going to send my terror ahead of you. Well, wait a minute. God is sending his terror ahead? Well, yes, that's very biblical, very biblical. Jesus said at one point in the Gospels, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. He says, you know, in a family, you'll have people divided against each other. You know, the, the actual within the family, the siblings will be divided against the siblings. The, the parents will be divided against the children and back and forth. Jesus is predicting that truth divides. Truth divides because some people are, have a commitment to selfishness, self-serving, and some people uh, choose to receive God's help and they choose to become what a human is supposed to be and become uh, other focused. You know, I want to do what's good good for you, truly good for you, uh, morally good for you. And so we have kind of those two approaches. So yeah, there are things that uh, that God has plans for that can't be synchronized with any other thing. So there's enemies here. We talked about this yesterday morning. That, that when their sin becomes full, God takes them out. And notice his promise. Basically, you guys aren't going to do too much. I'm going to drive them out before you. I'm going to send hornets and so on and drive them out before you. Um, the land is not going to fill up with nonsense and beasts along the way. If you just do what I say, if you'll just be faithful to me, if you don't adopt their beliefs, if you don't adopt their deeds, there's going to be good things that come. So that's the plan. God's going to do most of the work. He's going to send his hornets ahead and drive them out. Do you think this is one-time deal? No, this is the way it is for us. 
God will drive out our enemies ahead if we'll simply be faithful to him. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.